Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be talking about how to set up a load game screen inside of your Unity game. So if you haven't already seen my previous video on how to create a save screen, that would be a good video to go ahead and catch up on so that you know what we're talking about. But for the most part, this shouldn't be too complicated, so if you haven't seen that, you might be okay anyway. So first we'll talk about the hierarchy in the scene, and then I'll dive into the code, uh, which I will be providing in the description of this video as well. So inside of the hierarchy, we have three components here, which are really important, and notice that they're all taking place on the canvas, since uh, a load screen is part of your UI, so naturally it would go on the canvas. So the first uh, top component here is the panel. So a panel, it just has an image as a background. I've attached a script to it called load screen, which is the main script for this video. Um, and this manages the actual loading and, uh, well, yeah, loading. And then there's a version for the save screen for the save screen for saving. But the main idea behind a panel is it provides a solid colored background that you can have for your UI element. So under panel and the hierarchy are grid layout and uh, a button for closing the window. You don't actually see any of the load buttons here because the load buttons are all generated after the panel is opened up while the game is actively running. And those buttons get added to this grid layout, the load buttons grid layout. Um, I have that actually specified in the load screen script, so this requires you to have a grid layout set. Now, in not every case would you have a grid layout for a save or load screen, but I think it works pretty decently by the nature that every load button or uh, load save name is going to basically look the same, so having it as a list or a grid works pretty well. The other component that is actively being shown here in all cases is the close window button. It's not something you absolutely have to have, but if you open up the load game window, you probably want some way to close it. Now that could be um, basically making it so that when escape is pressed, that closes the window and you would script that in the code a bit. But here it's just an on-click button event. So whenever this close window button up here is clicked, there's a method in load screen called toggle menu, which just toggles the visibility of this menu on and off. And since it would have to be visible in order for us to, uh, to actually click on the close window button, that's always going to close the window. So let's go ahead and see how this looks in the live scene. So I hit play. We have this load screen button. This is just set to toggle the visibility of the load game screen panel. And in this panel, it creates buttons for each save we actively have in our persistent save location, which is one of the things we talked about in uh, previous videos. So for each of the XML files it finds there, it creates a button with the data stored in those files. So that's going to include the name of the save file at the top, the last uh, scene when the game was saved, which is load game scene, this one actually. Uh, and the date time when that game was saved. And if we click on one of these buttons, it's going to load the game, basically taking all of the data from that save file, putting it onto the game control, basically an active memory under the game data. Then it loads the scene that was saved to that file. So that's basically the scene that you saved the game at is also the scene that it's going to load. You don't necessarily want to do that in all games, but a lot of games have that going on where you progress to like level six and there's a save point. So when the player loads, they want to load from that save point. So let's go ahead and look at the code here. Most of what's actually going on was covered in the save game videos. Just to quickly recap on file menu, it contains methods for how the menu should operate, providing the ability to toggle it on and off, um, to update the save buttons. Uh, that Those are the buttons that you see displayed on screen. And uh, to repopulate the grid is probably the main thing. So whenever you shut the uh, the save game window or the load game window off and on. It's going to remove all the old buttons and you need to repopulate them just to make sure that all the buttons are always up to date and that they're not uh, actively taking up memory resources. So likewise, it also includes one for depopulating the grid. That's the one that just removes all the old buttons so that new buttons can be added in. And all the buttons are managed in a list of save load buttons but they are actually added, or instantiated rather, 
on top of the grid layout. So that's the grid layout that you specify in the inspector. So what's different about the load screen is that when a button is pressed on the load screen, it loads the game instead of saving the game. So two separate implementations, one for the load screen to load the game and one for the save screen to obviously save the game to a file. So in this code, there's two possibilities. One is that you have a delete box checked. I didn't actually add a delete box, but you know that's a simple toggle check box and the other is that the delete game isn't checked so you just load the game now you wouldn't have to have this in a central game control area that's just how i chose to implement it and we'll go to there in a second um down here if delete is checked then it would actually delete the file and remove the save button so let's go take a look at load game here and of course, all of this code is going to be provided. I'm just going to give you the uh, the current package for this tutorial, which includes all of the scripts we've talked about so far. So it makes sure that the directory exists and creates it if it doesn't already exist. It creates a full pot file path so that it can properly look up the location, file name, and extension for the save file. And that's going to check if it exists. If it exists there, we use file stream, XML serializer, XML reader. Uh, to basically open that up, read the data inside of it. Important things to note here, the XML serializer takes an object type. So the object type is game data, which I created earlier as a serializable object. If you can be serializing data to a file, which we are, then it needs to be a serializable object, hence why you would want a game data class of some kind. But once that's uh, basically set up, uh, XML serializer that's set up to open game data, we use a reader, created on top of the file stream and the file stream is just opening up that file at the full file path so basically we're taking the path inside of the file stream uh, reading it with the xml reader and the xml serializer basically takes whatever information is in the reader and it deserializes that making sure that the game data type is still specified i'm not actually sure if this part's necessary but it doesn't hurt and uh, whatever information gets spat out of there gets put in game data but since it's serializing and deserializing it should work hundred percent of the time as long as you don't change anything about the game data class so if you had a really old version of the save file you might need a way to actually update that for your players uh, where they like download a new patch and then uh, their old saves have to be transformed into the new saves we're not going to go into that really in this video just something to be aware of and of course, whenever we deal with file streams and we're done with it, we close it out. And then finally, with the game data loaded into this game control class, because remember, we're looking at game control right now. So it's storing all the game data in the game control class, which is a singleton instance, which means it's always going to be there. There's always only one of them. And you can call it as a static reference. So whenever we want to get the game data, it would just be game control .game data. Anywho, uh, when we're done closing that out, we load the scene asynchronously, which means other things can run while it's loading. And we load the last saved scene, which is now stored in game data. So basically whatever scene the player was on when they hit save is also going to be the scene which gets loaded. How exactly you want to implement that with uh, loading and saving and where it spits your player back out, that's up to you. But the simple solution should be a decent ground to work from in making it adapted to your game needs. So let's demo it one more time. Load screen. We have the buttons here. When we click on a button, it's going to load the game, which involves pulling in all the data from the XML file and then loading the scene stored in that XML file. So we click that. We go back to this new scene and let's see if we can prove that the data loaded. So this last save file, last save time and saved scene, th these fields are only set if it was actually a uh, save file that we were pulling it out from because uh, those default to basically blank fields. So the fact that that information is now there proves that the game data was loaded in there successfully. So we deserialized the data and we loaded the scene. So that's exactly what we're looking for. So I've been Chris. Thanks for tuning in to this video on loading games inside of Unity. I hope that this tutorial was helpful. And if you want to see the scripts that were used in this video, they're going to be inside the description. Go ahead, freely download them, use them however you want. In any case, I will see you guys in my future video content.